For people that don't understand the fixed growth mind, fixed mindset versus the growth mindset, how would you just summarize it right here? If I'll someone... just steal Carol Dweck's words. Okay. So a fixed mindset is somebody who believes that their talent and intelligence are fixed traits set at birth. Somebody with a growth mindset believes that their talent and intelligence are malleable traits that will change with disciplined practice. And once you go from the fix to the growth, then all of a sudden it, everything changes because you realize, oh, I suck at that now, but I could get good at it. So she says to use the word yet. I'm not good at that yet. And just by putting that appending word on there, you realize, oh, okay. So if I wanted to put energy into that, I could get extraordinary. You can articulate it as you are responsible for your life. And if you're sitting around waiting on somebody to save you, to fix you, to even help you, you are wasting your time because only you have the power to take responsibility to move your life forward. And the sooner you get that, the sooner your life gets into gear. This is what I know from doing 25 years and thousands and thousands of interviews on The Oprah Show. It does not matter where you come from. I have seen people come out of the desert, walk across the desert, being born in the most dire of circumstances. Doesn't matter what your mama did, whether she did or had a PhD or no D, what matters is now, this moment, and your willingness to see this moment for what it is, accept it, forgive the past, take responsibility, and move forward. I just don't know how to complain. I always think somebody has it worse. And if somebody has it worse, you need to shut up. Whoever is the 7.7, if that's the number we're at, whoever's in last place, Whoever that person is, if there was a world chart ranking and Sally was dead last, she can talk. So you really have to decide. The most important decision is, do I want to be happy? Will I commit to being happy? More important than happy. Sometimes you'd be so happy you smile so much your face hurts, right? You need variety. Am I committed to living in a beautiful state even when it doesn't go my way? even when it rains on my parade, even when my biggest fear shows up. Because I can't control whether your husband or wife will live or die or get sick or leave you or get a divorce. I don't want any of that to happen to any human being. I hate suffering. I do anything I can to help people not suffer. But I can't control that. You can. You can. There are people who have lost their arms, lost their sight. There have been people that have been through the most horrific experiences in life and they found a way to still be happy because they've made the decision that life is too short to suffer. Your life doesn't end up an accident. Your life is a series of actions that you initiate or don't initiate. And that your thoughts are gonna control that roadmap. And so how are you using your mind today to either make yourself feel great or not? I posted on Instagram this morning. I said, listen, your destiny is ultimately controlled to by a decision you already made this morning. Everyone watching this already made a decision this morning. This morning, they made it a life-changing, huge decision this morning. and that is either I'm gonna get up, enter the world with no intention, go through the motions to hopefully get by or survive, or I am going to get clear in this morning about what I want, what I'm going after, who I'm going to be, how I'm gonna serve, and whether or not I'm gonna be excellent and extraordinary or not. And the problem is most people never make that conscious decision. So, <laughs> right? so the demand has, has, has pressed us into this crazy realm mm. of, of, uh, of, of um, multitasking. And I think that you start shifting, where you place your attention is where you place your energy. So if you're shifting your attention all over the board, your energy is scattered. Yeah. So then when you start disconnecting from everybody, your boss, your coworker, you know, the news, uh, your cell phone, your computer, and you start going this way, I think it's, uh, into the present moment, then if where you place your attention is where you place your energy and you're truly in the present moment, you got a lot of energy to execute. You got yeah. a lot of energy to use and you want to be able to do that eyes open. The more well. scattered your energy, the less you have to focus on pushing one thing forward. That's why people's dreams forward. don't yeah. happen because... Too scattered. It, yeah. it, it, there's no... Look, look, if you keep putting your attention on some future experience that you are imagining with your mind, your body's going to follow your mind right there because that's where your energy is. From one thing to another. So if you have 1,000, a cumulative total of 1,000 things and people in your life, 
and only 100% of energy because your battery charges to 100% on your phone, right? So you that means those 1,000 things, everything is getting 0.1% of your energy. Very simple math, right? But if you have 10,000 things and people in your life, then everything is getting less energy. Less energy means less growth. So simplify your life to the most important people and things in your life so that those few things and those few people get the most energy and then those things grow. The sounds, be careful who you listen to. Be careful who gives you advice because at the end of the day, find the people that are living a life you want, have the health you want, the income you want, the happiness you want, the relationship you want. Interview them, talk to them, read about them, watch their videos. That's where you get this inspiration. That's what allows you to create your own story. You don't need the feedback of other people. You don't need them to be the wind underneath your sail. You start getting lift off, and then believe me, the right people will surround you, and simultaneously, some of the wrong people will separate from you. And I'm gonna just tell you this honestly, if you're about to make a change in your life and you feel uncomfortable, that's the best feeling you can have. Because for the first time in your life, you're making a decision that's gonna be best for you and not what somebody told you to do. And that's when all bets are off, man, because you're about to enter some, some uncharted waters that's gonna force you to challenge yourself to be perfect in so many ways. And, and shooting for perfection is all good. You don't shoot for average, because you're, you're not gonna hit all the time. If you shoot for perfection and you hit good or great, you're winning. Don't ever shoot for average. I just, I just try to get people to understand, don't be average. Number five is catch that wagon. So don't have an all or nothing mindset. Don't think that if you miss one day meditating or you miss one workout that you're a total failure. When it comes to falling off the wagon, that's fine and you probably will. We all do. This is where I think you're getting tripped up though. I think you're spending so much time beating up on yourself that you fell off the wagon that the wagon is just leaving into the distance and you're not getting back on it. So make sure you run and catch that wagon.